It's Wednesday, November 17th, and the time for your Barbados Today Morning News Update. Babies born in Barbados or given intensive newborn care here have the best shot of surviving the first five years of life than elsewhere in the region. That's according to senior pediatrician Dr. Gillian Birchwood, who on Tuesday declared a near-perfect survival rate for premature babies and a steady decline in neonatal deaths. And as Barbados joins the globe in observing World Prematurity Day today, Dr. Birchwood appealed for donors to support the work of the life-saving team that takes in sick and premature babies from Barbados and elsewhere in the region. The neonatal intensive care unit consultant specialist at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital reported that in 2020, the neonatal mortality rate stood at 6 per 1,000 life births, which is said to be the best in the Caribbean at this time. The NICU cares for between 400 to 600 babies as young as 25 weeks and weighing as little as 500 to 600 grams. Barbadians expecting barrels and packages for Christmas have been assured of faster clearance times this year. Speaking in Parliament on Tuesday, Minister in the Ministry of Finance, Ryan Strawn, disclosed that the Customs Department had been making provision for the expected increases in the arrival of items at the Bridgetown port. The minister gave the assurance as he introduced the Customs Bill, which will repeal and replace the Customs Act. Sir, I know most people just want to know how quickly they can get the, the, the items out of the, <laughs> out of the port. And let me say that um, we know that certainly over the last three weeks that we have seen a 50% increase in the um, arrival of packages in the country and the controller has already um, dispatched additional personnel to be able to, to deal with that. But I will be meeting um, tomorrow, sir, with the operators as we move into this Yuletide season, sir, to, to ensure that they too are stepping up to the plate to, to facilitate the process with respect to, to persons getting their items. I'm very clear in my mind, sir, that we have gone through a very serious year and the extent to which we can make our Yuletide season, sir, as, as pleasant as we possibly could. Um, it is important that, that we, we, when we meet with them that they share with us, sir, their plans for how they will operate certainly over the next few weeks to allow for a seamless uh, uh, process as possible. The Democratic Labour Party has welcomed the easing of the curfew, saying that this would provide some breathing room for micro and small businesses to start to dig themselves from the brink of collapse. However, the party's spokesperson on small business and entrepreneurship, Ryan Walters, is calling for sustained and steady easing of the remaining measures to provide the business community with the best chance to earn. He said small operators have experienced low levels of income or none at all for some time and being able to open longer or for some to open for the first time in months will definitely drive the recovery process. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To news from the region now, the Guyana government has revised its national emergency COVID-19 measures to allow for the reopening of the Guyana-Brazil border crossing from Mondays to Fridays. More from Gordon Mosley of News Source, Guyana. 
But after being closed for more than a year to stem the spread of COVID-19 in the Upper Takatu region, the Ghana government has revised the national emergency COVID-19 measures to allow for the Ghana-Brazil border crossing to be open from Mondays to Fridays. The measure has already taken effect and replaces the old arrangement where persons were allowed to travel between the two countries using the crossing only on Fridays. In October, the borders were reopened to facilitate trade on Thursdays and Fridays. During today's COVID-19 update, the Health Minister, Dr. Frank Anthony, said the revised measures have been put in place to allow for the general movement of people and not only for business purposes. So this opening from Monday to Friday um, would allow for people to come across once they are able to produce uh, their vaccination to show that they are fully vaccinated and that they have an antigen test or a PCR test that is negative. Um, this is at, at all our border points, this is what we required and um, at the border with Brazil, this is what we have put in place. The minister also said the policy for persons entering Guyana at any one of the ports of entry remains the same and persons must present proof of vaccination as well as a negative COVID-19 or antigen test. And finally, the fourth World Health Organization's Global Tobacco Trends Report shows that there are over 1.3 billion tobacco users globally. The report also shows that 60 countries are now on track to achieve the voluntary global target of a 30% reduction in tobacco use between 2010 and 2025. Today, we are releasing the WHO Global Report on Trends in Prevalence of Tobacco Use which shows that 150 countries are seeing tobacco use rates in decline. 60 of them are declining fast enough to likely meet the ambitious target of a 30% relative reduction in tobacco use in, by 2025. Just two years ago, in the previous report, only 32 countries were on track for these targets the number of countries has thus almost doubled. Countries are at, an, are at all income levels are making progress and getting on track to meet the targets. The evidence is clear. Tobacco control works. However, Dr. Rudiger Rich, director of the World Health Organization's Health Promotion, has disclosed that there are concerns about tobacco use among children. While it ought to be impossible for minors to obtain and use tobacco products, globally 38 million children aged 13 to 15 years of age report using tobacco of some kind. 25 million boys and 13 million girls. This is not including e-cigarettes, which we know are already exceeding tobacco in popularity in some countries. The tobacco industry continues to make well-researched, calculated and unscrupulous attempts to redesign and rebrand its products to sustain profitability and target young people with a new portfolio of products to hook the next generation of users. All countries have a moral obligation, and many also a legal one, to protect children from being hooked early as future customers for life. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.